Hi, my name is Mohammed. I'm an IELTS instructor and mock examiner in Afarinesh. In this video, I'm going to interview a very good candidate who is very likely to get an eight in her speaking. Listen carefully to our interview. Notice how fluent she is and how she uses a wide range of vocabularies and grammar. Stay tuned with us. At the end of this video, I'm going to analyze her speaking. Hi, how are you? How is it going? Hello, everything is fine. Thanks Great. for having me. Great. So this is the mock exam of International English Language Test System. My name is Mohammed Bagher Sultanizade. Could you please tell me your full name? Sure. This is Donia Lavasanjam. Okay, Donia. I'm mostly nicknamed by Miss World. Okay, great. Uh, Donia, where are you from? Well, I'm from Iran, and currently I live with my family in Tehran, the capital city. Great. Dunya, in this first part, I'm going to ask you some questions about yourself. Let's talk about sure. what you do. Do you work or are you a student? Um, right now, I'm a full-time nurse anesthetist, and I work in the hospital. But since I'm an avid learner, I never cease uh, learning new things. So whenever I get the opportunity, I uh, take up different activities to learn something new. Mm -hmm. Is there something you dislike about your job? Well, I can mention a couple of things. For instance, sometimes we don't slip a wink during night shift, uh, which means that we uh, stay up until very small hours. But all in all, I do uh, enjoy my job since I have this satisfaction and it definitely helps me to be unwind. Mm -hmm. Great. Uh, what was your favorite job when you were younger? Uh, when I look back, I uh, reminisce about uh, those days uh, when I first developed a taste for uh, the field of medicine. You know, I would always watch all the documentaries about human body and nature. And I think I've realized uh, this dream of mine since childhood that I, I finally entered the field of uh, medicine and paramedical uh, job. Thank you very much. And do you think you will change your job in the future? Uh, honestly speaking, I've never thought of this since, as I mentioned earlier, uh, I do love my job, but now that you ask this, uh, I don't think so. I don't like switching my job. I, I'm quite satisfied with the path I've already taken. Great. Okay, let's move on to advertising. Uh, do you watch advertisements from the beginning to the end? Uh, I don't like to do this, but we kind of have to. For instance, uh, take uh, YouTube. Uh, it used to have the option to skip the ad, but we don't have that anymore. So they have us watch all the uh, advertisements thoroughly, which mm -hmm. I don't like. It sounds more like a torture and it, the time goes painfully slowly, even though it may take only 10 seconds. Great. Is there much advertising in your country? Uh, I think so. You know, the ads are ubiquitous these days. Uh, take social media, for instance, or even when you step outside, there are humongous billboards and different posters when you come across, even on the street. Uh, on TV, you uh, turn on the TV and uh, you watch different ads uh, before, during, and even after a movie of your favorite. So I think they are omnipresent in these lives, mm -hmm. in today's lives. Okay. And what do you think is the purpose of advertising? Uh, the purpose would definitely be uh, boost uh, sale, for sure, different companies. And uh, it's a great factor in the marketing field to uh, roll out their product through different ads and uh, attract different customers. 
Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. And I'm going to ask you some questions about colors. Mm -hmm. What colors would you never use in your room? Uh, speaking for myself, I'm so into uh, nude colors. You know what I mean? Like cream, uh, brown, ivory white. So if I had a house of my own, I would never, ever uh, use colors like uh, shocking pink, lime green, or bright red in that, since mm -hmm. I'm not a big fan of those colors. Mm -hmm, great. And what color car would you like to choose? Well, this is a whole new story, since if I had a car, I would definitely uh, choose uh, my all-time favorite color, which is canary yellow. I just a huge fan of this color since it's uh, so vibrant and it gives me a feeling I can't express in words. I do love this color. I know it might stand out in the crowd, mm -hmm. but I like it anyway. <laughs> Great. And what colors do your friends like? My friends, well, I think uh, people are interested in a wide range of uh, color variants and shapes. Uh, a couple of my friends are totally into uh, bright colors, unlike me, but a handful of them share the same view as mine, like, as I mentioned earlier, uh, neutral colors and mm -hmm. nude ones. Interesting. Dunya, in this part, I'm going to ask you a question. You have one minute mm -hmm. to take notes, if you wish. And after that, you need yeah. to speak between one to two minutes. Did you understand? Of course. Okay, so I want you to describe a person whose creative work mm -hmm. you admire. So remember that you have one minute to take notes. Sure. Thank you very much. Remember that you have one to two minutes to talk about this question. Don't worry if I stop you. Did you understand? Yes. So yes. can you start speaking now? Sure. Well... There are countless innovative people throughout history that people are fond of. But if I were to mention someone I'm also a big fan of, it would be the legendary Michael Jackson. Well, it almost seems like yesterday that my uncle and I would watch his uh, iconic music videos on an old uh, computer. And uh, honestly speaking, I wasn't, uh, I was reluctant to uh, give it a try at first, since uh, back in the day, I had zero English knowledge, and every lyric were, uh, was just uh, above my head, over my head. Um, but when I gave it a try, it was far more fascinating than I had expected. I mean, uh, the more I got involved, the more I realized that he's not an ordinary thinker. To walk you through his work, uh, it's safe to say, I think, that he uh, was uh, a child a prodigy. I mean, he used to appear uh, his older siblings' music videos, but he was never uh, under uh, their shadow, you know? And as soon as he, uh, you know, uh, went solo in his career, uh, his career actually took off in no time. Um, moreover, uh, he was able to uh, you know what, uh, he was able to uh, juggle an array of uh, responsibilities simultaneously. For instance, not only was he the singer, but the songwriter, and also the dance choreographer. And among all things, he directed all his music videos uh, from A to Z without any help. And he also brought his A game. Uh, Apart from uh, thank you the very much, industry. thank you very much, Dunya. Uh, do you think you were more creative when you were younger? I would say so, since you know, uh, when I was uh, younger, I had uh, more time to uh, indulge myself in uh, leisure activities, for instance, drawing, painting, uh, which I grew a great deal of interest at very uh, early stages of my life. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank you very much. 
Uh, we've been talking about a person whose creative work you admire, and I'm going to discuss with you some more general mm -hmm. questions relating to this. Let's talk about the relationship between art and creativity. Do you think mm -hmm. art can make a person more creative? Uh, not necessarily. For example, if an um, artist uh, pr uh, rep uh, produce replicas of uh, another person's uh, painting, this is not creativity. This is just copying uh, someone else's style. So uh, it wouldn't necessarily mean uh, that an artist is creative. But the vice versa, I think, is uh, true. When you are creative, you are an artist and you add a bit of a color to this world. Uh, do you think you were more creative when you were younger? I would say so, unfortunately, since when I was younger, I remember that I had much more free time than I already have now. And I was more creative since drawing and painting uh, were my main pastime activities. Thank you very much. We've been talking about a person whose creative work you admire, and I'm going to discuss with you some more general questions relating to this. Let's talk about the relationship between art and creativity. Do you think art can help people be more creative? Um, not necessarily. I mean, uh, an artist uh, may uh, just uh, copy another uh, creative person's uh, um, art productions, like a painting, for instance. Uh, so this is uh, of no value, you know, they are just uh, making uh, another replica. So I wouldn't say that uh, an artist is definitely a creative person. Mm -hmm. So some people believe that it's better to teach children art to be more creative. What do you think about that? Uh, this is a great idea unless the children are uh, enthusiastic in this field. You know, if someone doesn't uh, like art, uh, making this subject uh, something mandatory wouldn't help. Uh, on the other hand, uh, I think uh, schools can play a pivotal role here, here in order to pave the way to roll out creativity and art among children. Mm -hmm. Do you know what kind of jobs require creativity? Uh, the first thing that comes to my mind is the fact that all jobs, regardless of what they are, need uh, uh, just a touch of creativity, you know? Uh, especially if you want to ra uh, rise above uh, the mediocrity. You should uh, just be yourself and be more creative in order to uh, add color to this life and your job as a result. Mm -hmm. And what can we do to improve our creativity? Um, I think uh, we can enroll in different uh, activities that require uh, creativity and imagination, like different classes. Uh, I think you can uh, draw more or uh, start painting. Some people uh, definitely enjoy uh, taking up a musical instrument that can definitely uh, help to great deal in order to improve your creativity. Specifically for children, what can schools do to improve children's creativity? Well, as I mentioned earlier, uh, they can definitely pave the way for school children by adding extra uh, art classes to the school's curriculum. Mm -hmm. Or they can uh, hire quality teachers and facilities uh, in children's school in order to uh, make it just easier and more available uh, for the public. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Donia. This is the end of our speaking. Thanks for having me. It was my pleasure. Okay, thank you very much. Thanks for joining us. Now, as I said before, Donia is going to get band eight in her speaking. So let's uh, talk a little bit more about why she's very likely to get band eight. 
So let's have a close look at the at the band descriptor. So my first impression was that Donia was very fluent. So at the beginning, I was pretty confident that she was able to get band eight. So if we look uh, uh, closely at the band descriptor, Donia speaks fluently only occasional repetition, self-correction. And uh, even though she had some hesitations, most of them were content-related hesitations, which means that she was looking for some ideas. And the times that she wanted to look for language was very rare. And you can say that uh, throughout her speaking, Donia could develop topics coherently, appropriately with very good use of uh, fl uh, fluency markers, linkers. She was able to connect her ideas. So that's uh, very likely that she gets band eight in her fluency and coherence. Uh, in terms of vocabulary, or as we say, lexical resources, she's able to use a wide range of vocabularies. She's able to use everyday vocabularies, less common vocabularies, idiomatic languages, and she, uh, the vocabulary she used could convey precise meaning. For example, while uh, she was talking about Michael Jackson, she used the word prodigy, which was very topic related about a creative person. Apart from that, she was able to use idiomatic uh, vocabulary skillfully. Her speaking wasn't mechanical or she, she didn't come up with, uh, with just some memorized languages. And we could also see that the flexibility in her speaking that she could use uh, a range of uh, vocabularies and she could avoid uh, having repetition. And a very good part of her speaking was the grammar. She used conditional sentences, double compares, comparative, the more, the more, uh, uh, a past perfect, which was uh, great. Although she had uh, some, some uh, grammatical mistakes, for example, once she said, uh, it give me, she should have said, it gives me, okay but they were non-systematic and they were only very occasional inappropriacy. Talking about her pronunciation, she could use individual words, individual sounds accurately, and she could use a wide range of uh, pronunciation features, for example, the intonation, stressed words, and also she could uh, speak in chunk and she was, uh, it was very easy to understand her speaking. I would add that uh, her first language accent had a minimal effect on the intelligibility. So that's why we can come to a conclusion that Dunya is going to get band eight in her speaking. So that's about it. I hope you've enjoyed uh, our speaking. So if you have any questions, please write down in the comment section. Thank you. Bye for now. خانه آیلتس آفرینش تنها مرکز تخصصی دوره های آیلتس در ایران www.afarinesh.org